Welcome back to the Bearded Console Gamer, and today we're going to be diving into the news that Xbox has finally and officially completed the deal to acquire Xenomax Media, and with it absorbed a ton of heavy hitting studios, including Machine Games, Arcane Studios, and of course Bethesda, the makers of the passingly famous Elder Scrolls and Fallout franchises. We'll get into that and break down a new statement from the head of Xbox, Phil Spencer, in which he gives us some new insights as to how Microsoft is going to handle the scary question of console exclusivity for games created by Bethesda and the other newly acquired ZeniMax Studios. And as always, if you like the video, please remember to like and leave a subscribe as it would really help my channel grow. But back to it, March 9th, 2021 officially marked the day that Xbox took ownership of Bethesda, id Software, Xenomax Online, Arcane, Machine Games, Tango Game Worlds, Alpha Dog, and Roundhouse Studios, along with all of their current IPs. Bethesda celebrated the news by posting an uplifting video on Twitter, gleefully stating, Here's to the next journey, only now getting started. Today, we have officially joined the Xbox family. The triumphant and celebratory tone of the video echoed the sentiment of Xbox fans spread around the globe, and at the same time, belayed the feeling of horror creeping into the gut of every diehard PlayStation fan out there. For the great question remained unanswered. How would Xbox approach game exclusivity? Now, this was always going to be a bouncing act for both Microsoft and Phil Spencer. On the one hand, they had the option of taking the vast majority of the single-player games made by those studios and making them console exclusives, a move that would bolster their Xbox-only first-party lineup and induce a ton more players to buy into Game Pass, which, in turn, would make that model a whole lot more sustainable. On the other hand, making its titles exclusive to the Xbox platforms would prevent Big Phil from making a buttload of money selling the software to PlayStation gamers, and that is a huge market to just cut off entirely. Now, all the way back in September 2020, when the ZeniMax acquisition was first announced, I made the prediction that Phil Spencer would probably be looking to straddle that line, and release some of the biggest games to the other consoles either straight away or following a timed exclusive period, while keeping other newer games as Xbox exclusives straight from the get-go. And judging by a recent press release penned by Phil Spencer, it sounds like I am, once again, correct. The blog starts with Big Phil welcoming the new studios and celebrating the joining of the two companies, stating that now that everything is official, they could begin working together to deliver more great games for everyone. Special P then proceeded to spend the next 372 words being as vague as humanly possible as to what that actually meant. Phyllis went on to use the following words related to console exclusivity. Our goal is to give these teams the best foundation for doing their greatest work, and to learn from them as we continue to build Xbox into an inclusive platform for all players. And then, this is the next step in building an industry-leading first-party studio team, a commitment that we have to our Xbox community. But with the addition of the Bethesda creative teams, gamers should know that Xbox consoles, PC, and Game Pass will be the best place to experience new Bethesda games, including some new titles in the future that will be exclusive to Xbox and PC players. Oh, and it's vitally important that Bethesda continues making games the way that it has. We look forward to empowering Bethesda's creative teams to reach even more players around the world. Finally, Bethesda understands the potential of Xbox Game Pass. Well, thanks for the clarification, Fizzle. Okay, so he didn't exactly spell out which titles are going to be exclusives, but let's try and take a look at what solid indications we can extract from this buffet of vagueness. Early on, we get some emphasis on expanding the reach of the Bethesda player base, and you can't exactly do that if you cut the studio's games off from every player who prefers to play on a PS5 or a Switch. And then you get the wording of this sentence, some new titles in the future will be exclusive to Xbox and PC players. So yes, we know that Phil is going to keep some of the choicest new IPs back for Xbox-only growth, but not all of them. And in my opinion, probably not the ones that matter the most. In October last year, notably after the ZeniMax merger was announced, Todd Howard agreed with interviewer James Batchelor that it would be hard to imagine the next Elder Scrolls title being a console exclusive. And frankly, I agree. Skyrim has killed it financially since its launch almost a full 10 years ago, partially because, yes, it's a truly amazing game, but also partially because it was featured and subsequently remade and remade and remade on so many different platforms. Suddenly switching this wildly successful franchise to a single platform model would be insanity. And I think the same also holds true for Bethesda's other flagpole franchise, Fallout. And it also makes perfect sense to launch any upcoming multiplayer games on as many platforms as possible, in order to keep the player base as strong as you can once that initial hype cycle has faded out. 
But on the flip side, you get new games like Starfield, Indiana Jones, any titles in development, and probably every single new IP that's on a single player perspective are gonna be held back as Xbox exclusives. Now onto Bethesda understands the potential of Xbox Game Pass, that can only mean one thing, and that's that we can expect all major ZeniMax Studio produced games from this day onwards to be day one Game Pass titles in order to try and draw more users onto that subscription service. It's going to make the best deal in gaming even more attractive, and if you're Microsoft, it's something you've just got to do anyway. According to an interview with Eurogamer, industry analyst Daniel Ahmed estimated that Xbox is going to eventually need to get around 50 million subscribers to be as profitable as it was under its previous business model. As of the last report, Game Pass was sitting at around 18 million subs and it was growing quickly, so the 50 million target laid out by Ahmed is doable if Xbox is able to continue making the service look more attractive by, say, adding a whole chub of ZeniMax titles to the mix. Also interesting is the report that, according to VentureBeat's Jeff Grubb, Bethesda won't be part of the main Xbox game showcase that'll be taking part around what would ordinarily be E3 time. Said Jeff has instead suggested that there could be two quickfire conferences, one Xbox and one Bethesda, kind of like a one-two punch. Now that could simply be a marketing move by Xbox, or it could be a reflection that there's going to be some huge multi-plat Bethesda announcements in there that would play a lot better in a studio presentation than they would in an entirely Xbox branded event. Also, just as a quick aside, was anyone else a little bit surprised with how smoothly the deal seemed to go through? I honestly thought there'd be a little bit more friction from the regulatory bodies in the US and Europe who signed off on the acquisition especially considering the size of the parties involved and the potentially sweeping impact that this acquisition could have on the industry. And I mean, that lack of trouble is probably in part because the merger is essentially a vertical integration, wherein a content distributor buys a content producer rather than a horizontal merger wherein one competitor absorbs another. The latter of those two scenarios is the one where the authorities have a serious problem with it as it stifles competition to a far greater extent. However, vertical integrations can still raise monopoly issues, and Xbox is likely to run into more friction the next time they make a large-scale independent studio acquisition. Oh, there are also a bunch of rumours flying around suggesting that we might be getting a video presentation on Thursday where we'll hear more about how the new Zenimax Studios are going to be folded in with the existing Xbox offering, so be sure to check back later this week for coverage on that. And that's it for today. Let me know what you thought about the Bethesda acquisition in the comments section and weigh in on how you're hoping Xbox is going to handle the prickly issue of exclusivity. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to subscribe and hit that like button and keep it here for all the latest and most important news from around the video gaming industry.